Bentiu is the capital to Unity State in the northern region of South Sudan, close to the border of the Republic of the Sudan. In South Sudan, two-thirds of the country is currently experiencing flooding. Over 900 people have been directly impacted as waters have swept away homes and livestock, forced thousands to flee and have affected large portions of farmlands. This flood has affected people. It has completely destroyed uh, the basic livelihoods of the people. And by that I mean it has destroyed all crops and all the land is being submerged by water. In Unity State, the capital Bintu has become an island surrounded by flood waters. All roads in and out are impassable and only boats and airstrips serve as lifelines for humanitarian aid to reach the numerous people already displaced by both flooding and conflict. More civilians have moved to camps for displaced populations, heightening the risk of gender-based violence with a big number of this population being women and girls. The last month, we received many cases raping. These are the challenges we face in Sahe Eben Awardis. Uh, due to the flooding and the displacement, it was found out that um, the community, especially girls, uh, women and girls, moving from one location to the other, to the new locations, they had gone through a lot. So the community was actually psychologically tortured. <laughs> Both local and international NGOs have attempted to address gender-based violence, but the response has been inadequate. Hope Restoration South Sudan partnered with UNFPA for a period of six months, implemented the expected program output activities by providing gender-based violence prevention and response services for vulnerable population, particularly the internally displaced women and girls in Bentu and Ler in Unity State. Uh, the purpose of this project has been out of series of uh, uh, research that the institution has carried out particularly on uh, issues to do with gender-based violence and uh, the kind of activities that we need to implement to support women and girls across the country, and particularly in Bentiu and uh, Lair. With partnership and funding from UNFPA, HRSS was able to construct two women and girls friendly spaces in Lair and Bentiu. We've partnered with Hope Restoration South Sudan to scale up services that would allow women not only to heal from the trauma of gender-based violence which such situation has thrown up, but also to build the economic skills and opportunities that will help them strengthen resilience and provide better for themselves and for their community. The main aims of this project is to provide safe spaces for women and girls, PSS, and build the livelihood for vulnerable women and girls, GBV prevention and response services at a one-stop center in mobile outreaches. The community have really benefited because when you really want to, to go for assistance, you easily know where the services are being provided. We also have one-stop center in Bentu, which has been of greater help. To our women. We do raise awareness in the community so that the, the community members will know that there is a one-stop centre in, in Bentry State Hospital. Uh, there are certain cases that I normally handle uh, in my office. Like for instance, if a survivor came to my office, renting for the legal services. So first, 
uh, I always uh, find out uh, what are the problem or what is the problem. Uh, second to that, if the survivor is in need of legal assistance, uh, first of all, I have to refer this uh, to the legal services, like uh, we have our customary court here that is trying very hard uh, to handle these cases. HRSS field staff has put tireless efforts to see that no one is left behind in these programs and activities. Women and girls are taught skills that help them start income generating projects like hair plating, mandazi baking, fuel efficient stove making, knitting of mats, and bedsheet designing. <laughs> The friendly spaces have been welcomed by the community and are seen as a place of refuge and point of connection to get knowledge and encouragement. Towards the launch of this center, the women, girls, and HRSS staff were happy to tirelessly participate in the preparation to see that the launch event is a success. You see smiles on the faces of these beneficiaries. They feel good. That is what we wanted, and that is what we have achieved. The, the community leaders, they were here in the morning to clear the way so that the visitor will just have a clear way to pass. This is one of the examples showing how we are collaborating with the community leaders. The communities acknowledge that hope restoration services in the region has created a visible impact in their lives and understanding of their basic human rights. Now that hope restoration has trained uh, different, uh, you see, that it has empowered women, with different skills. All of those are some things, are things that are good for the community. However, the road is never smooth. There are a number of challenges in the running of the activities and daily operations. Initially, uh, when we started with awareness, especially with the community leaders, there is always resistance when change, when, uh, when it comes to change. We don't have a safe house in, in Unity State, so it is hard for, for the, some survivors who are, who are still uh, being cancelled. So it is, some survivors used to come and there is nowhere to keep them. Maybe the, the perpetrator is a relative, so it is hard for us to keep them in the hospital. It is good that we need a safe house. We don't have... With the support of the government, there is hope that the lives of communities will greatly be impacted. How are we going to minimize these things? Through what? Through building this women and girl friendly space to advocate, to give awareness, to train the women. That is why you see the Unity State Women today. As a Minister of Gender, Child and Social Welfare in the state level, I would like to keep on touch with you anywhere you are. And we walk hand in hand. The welfare, promotion of the welfare and protection of women and children is part of the mandate of the Ministry of Gender, Child and Social Welfare. So we are here because of our mandate. I really want to appreciate all of you for making this day very colorful. So it's a pleasure today that we are here under the leadership of the Honorable National Minister of Gender, Child and Social Welfare to commission this women and girls friendly space where women and girls have continued to receive psychosocial support 
sexual and reproductive health services as well as economic empowerment training to provide a range of products that have provided them income. The centre as well has been able to reach out to other duty bearers, chiefs, police, um, community leaders to ensure that we build a viable ecosystem that protects women, promotes their well-being and allows them to optimise their full potential. When you look at our capacity building for the beneficiaries that we are supporting has been quite massive. Most of the, 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 the success stories that come from the communities, we don't even speak on our behalf, they speak on it because they see a practical work that is being done. If we promise we want to do a construction, we do it, we deliver a standard. And if we focus on training leadership, we also do it. If we want to advocate for the traditional code in terms of ending child marriages, we make it practical. And that thing has happened when we did a lot of awareness raising with traditional chief in Bentiu. Last year, actually this year, uh, the chief, the paramount chief stopped a marriage of underage. That is out of the success of the capacity building given to them by Hope Restoration. Before, they could not see it as a problem. But you have to justify why this is a problem and why you want girls to continue with the studies. A world full of empowered women and girls is a world where all people thrive. Every girl and woman has a right to grow up free from all forms of violence and discrimination.